Hey guys, it's Alpetium back with another video for Helldivers 2 and today we're going to be discussing the new slash old race that is gonna be appearing at some time in the future, it might be soon, it might be later, who is to say, but they are coming and uh, well if you didn't play the first game this video might be a fun little video for you we're gonna be discussing who they are and going over their units that we know exist and uh, well the Helldivers 2 is probably gonna add a few more units of their own and before I even think about asking you to click that like or subscribe button for me I just ask that you give me a chance to earn that from you and with that being said hey let's get in on this so who are the Illuminate? Well, they are a highly sophisticated uh, civilization that has endured for several hundred thousand years, which makes them far, far older than humanity themselves. They call themselves the Squith, the Squith, the Squidward, okay, <laughs> not sure how to pronounce that, but originally aquatic these creatures dressed in ceremonial robes have managed to create a vast and extremely complex neural network for space travel. These species have since taken their first tentative steps towards the stars, produced weapons of mass destruction in large scale, and as such is something that the people of Super Earth cannot ignore. Now, to me personally, if you haven't played the first Helldivers, but you perhaps played, I don't know, for, uh, Warhammer, Hammer 40k, these guys are mostly like the Eldar, you know, and uh, obviously they're gonna come clashing heads with the humanity. How is this going to look like in Helldivers 2? Oh, it remains to be seen, but we're gonna be now proceeding to the units. So, their, well, units, they come in five uh, tiers. The first one is going to be the Scout, and it's basically Observer and two more variations of the Observer. So we're just going to be going over what the Observer is. This Scout unit has an advanced cloaking device, which makes it near impossible to spot, and is believed to keep the Illuminate civilization under tight watch. These suppressing drones are also used on the battlefield to scout out enemy resistance, to which point they can teleport their more heavily armed armored warriors. Guys, you are quite literally gonna be having enemies spawn right next to you, whispering in your ear sweet things of your own destruction, and it's going to be pretty damn fun. Now, their tactics, predominantly found on low to medium level planets, observers patrol the battlefield while cloaked, following semi-random patterns while searching for helldivers. Their patrols are more densely clustered around mission objectives, and they are also attracted to stratagem beacons. Oh my goodness, after spotting helldiver troops, observers will decloak and quickly raise an alarm to call for support from more powerful Illuminate units. As observers have no offensive capabilities, they normally reactivate their cloaking system after raising an alarm. So this is basically your bug breach and uh, bot dropship, and it's going to be pretty damn fun. The other two variants of the Observer are the Watcher and the Obsidian Observer. The Watcher has a shield added for extra protection, while the Obsidian Observer actually has some weaponry, but basically they act like this original unit. So the next one we have in the infantry class, and it's going to be the Tripod. Now this is a three-legged fighting machine under Illuminate command. Tripods utilize electrostatic technology to subdue and torture their victims. These guys, oh my god, these guys actually are really dangerous. These robotic units are somewhat of a wicked robotic counterpart to their aquatic masters. Immediately upon spawning, tripods will move towards players to engage them in combat with their close-range electrostatic weapons, a few shocks from which is enough to down a helldiver. Tripods are relatively slow and a few well-placed shots is usually enough to destroy them, however, their shield absorbs all damage from the first projectile that impacts them, meaning even very powerful weapons require at least two shots to destroy a tripod. Players can combat this trait by using shotguns or rapid-fire weapons. The tripod's shield blocks projectiles which would ordinarily pass through multiple enemies. This significantly reduces the effectiveness of, well, the railgun and another weapon that is justice that we might actually see inside Helldivers 2 against grouped tripods. And as long as the shield is up, the tripods are immune to stun, mini-stun, ignition by incendiary weapons as well. Tripods are immune to slow whether or not their shield is up. 
The next one is the Hunter. Utilizing stealth and guerrilla tactics, these soldiers use long-ranged high-powered electro-pulse gauntlets, which vaporize the air at ranges up to 10 kilometers. The static air is clearly visible to the eye and uh, as such can be avoided before the actual projectile is fired. For the Illuminate, to become a Hunter is the first step on the way to becoming an Illusionist. And hunter tactics found on most planets with an illuminate presence, hunters patrol the battlefield individually following semi-random patterns while searching for helldivers. They patrol more often around mission objectives and are also attracted to stratagem beacons. As of the new hell free content update, this is uh, something that was for the first game, shielded hunters will start appearing mixed in with the regular variety, which means once they do come in helldivers 2, you can probably also expect this to happen. Hunters always seek to engage Helldiver troops in combat from long range, using their sniper-like electro-pulse gauntlets. This weapon is extremely powerful and can kill players in a single shot, however, it takes a second or two to charge, uh, during which its intended path is clearly visible, meaning it can be avoided easily in most situations. It should also be noted that Hunters cannot shoot through the wall generated by the obelisk and will not attempt to do so. Hunters can also hit their fellow Illuminate. Yep, that's something we know that friendly fire is on for the enemy and us as well. Often accidentally vaporizing outcasts, hunters can survive up to one blast from another hunter if cunning helldivers trick them into sniping each other. Hunters have no melee attack and will flee from helldivers who get too close. This tactic, combined with the relatively long charge time of their weapons means that players are normally safe to ignore hunters while moving from one objective to the next. This is absolutely absolutely phenomenal. And this just reminds me so much of the Eldar. Hunters are most dangerous to turrets, escort objectives and deploy objectives as they can shoot from beyond a target's uh, range, while well, the turrets uh, <laughs> targeting range kill multiple survivors with a single shot and inflict significant damage to a resource convoy, geological survey rig or missile with a single hit. The next one up is The Apprentice. The Illuminate Society is believed to be based on knowledge. Individuals that have attained enough knowledge will eventually become an illusionist, and the apprentice role is the last step before that. Truly devastating, the apprentices are commonly found whenever the Illuminate attacks. Their nano abilities are dangerous and used to incapacitate their targets before moving into melee range to slice up their enemies. The tactics. After spawning, apprentices will typically launch a projectile attack at players which severely hinders the movement of any stricken helldiver. This allows the apprentices time to quickly enter the close range and engage players in combat with their powerful melee weapons. The orbs they launch can be shot to destroy them, fire them, incendiary bombs or incendiary grenades perk will destroy the projectiles on contact and make for an effective temporary barrier. Using the shield generator pack, and this is something that's gonna be making everyone very very happy in the current meta, uh, makes Helldivers immune to the slowing effect of the Apprentice's projectile attack. Apprentices are a relatively small target and move swiftly so players must be accurate when targeting them. Fortunately, they are only lightly armored and can normally be dispatched fairly easy from distance. Not only are apprentices something of a nod towards Eldar, oh my goodness, yeah, I knew it, Eldar warlocks with the regards as to their melee weapon, but said weapon also simultaneously seems to be a subtle visual shout out to the Anbir Yutus martial art from the Star Trek universe. I have probably butchered that name completely. And the next of the infantry is going to be the outcasts, which are the apprentices that try to attain knowledge and failed, shamed by their society for not being able to learn fast enough, outcasts are forced to fight on the battlefield, draped in a cloaking field, improperly armed with only melee weapons. They are the perfect example of how the Illuminate treats its own citizens, forced to fight and die for their lack of knowledge. Now this is not something that is very different to how the Super Earth treats its own citizens, because uh, you know what, this reminds me a lot of the Zap Brannigan, where you just keep chucking people at something and, uh, well, chuck enough and you are gonna be winning. 
the tactics. Immediately upon spawning, outcasts will seek to enter close range and engage players in combat with their rapid melee attacks. Outcasts glide over terrain very quickly, present a small target and are always cloaked, meaning they can be a tricky enemy for players to combat. Fortunately, they are only lightly armored and have no long range capabilities, so as long as the players are alert, they should be able to deal with outcasts before they can become a threat. And the next one up is going to be the Strider, which is the heavier version of the Tripod. The Strider is similarly armed, but with much tougher armor and shields. They serve as a illuminates heavy infantry, breaking enemy formations with their extremely painful electric attacks. And the Strider tactics are going to be exactly the same as the Tripods, because it's basically just a heavier variant of the same enemy. With the obelisk, we now move into the tank category. The obelisk is a heavily armored and shielded dome capable of self-teleportation and projecting a strong energy wall. The wall itself allows other illuminates to pass through but stops everything else. Fortunately, the obelisk exposes its core when projecting the wall and the only defense remaining is the shield. The tactics for the obelisk after spawning, it will project an energy wall at the nearest player or piece of equipment. Uh, <laughs> this is a powerful attack which will instantly kill or destroy anything in its path, which happens to be moving through the path at a time. Stationary players or equipment will still be targeted by the obelisk, but the energy wall will stop short and do no damage. As a rule of thumb, if the wall fully intersects the target, it will be destroyed. If not, it will be safe, though possibly take some damage. The energy wall will also destroy or kill any illuminate forces that happen to be standing in the way when it is created, though this is usually a fairly rare occurrence. With the illusionists, we move into the elite enemies. Now, illusionists are highly revered among the, well, the illuminate, and uh, have the ability to control other sentient beings with nanobot technology. Frontline soldiers have reported hallucinations, an ill will to fight, and generally apathy when fighting these perverse witches. Furthermore, these beings have a shielded device similar to that of tripods that will protect the illusionist. After spawning, illusionists will engage players in combat by launching homing projectiles at them, two or three of which are enough to down a Helldiver. These orbs detonate after a short time if they don't hit anything, causing all players caught in the blast area to have their controls temporarily reversed, walking, aiming, and even the input of stratagem codes are affected. Illusionists can only withstand a moderate amount of punishment and are normally fairly slow. However, they will teleport out of the line of fire after receiving some damage and their projectile attacks absorb some of the weapons fire intended for them. This combined with their control, reversal attacks can make them a dangerous and resilient foe. As long as their shield is up, illusions are immune to slow, stun, mini-stun, ignition, and poison from toxic weapons. Incendiary weapons and stratagems will ignite illusionists once their shields are depleted, prevent them from teleporting as long as they are burning. Another elite unit is going to be the council member, the absolute masters of the illuminate race. Council members are the ones holding their alien spaghetti-like appendages on the WMD trigger. They are very much like the illusionists but with political power and increased protection. Meeting one of these on the battlefield is a free pass to take out part of the threat presented by the illuminate race. When it comes to their tactics, these guys are pretty much, uh, well, they behave just like the illusionists. Everything about them is going to be the same. They are just simply a stronger variety of the same enemy. And with that, we reach the absolute top tier, master unit, and it's going to be the Great Eye. Intel suggests that the Illuminate Great Eye to be large AI creatures monitoring the Illuminate society and correcting any discrepancies in behavior or even thought. The Great Eye is heavily armed and might even hold the keys to their WMD weapons. It's uh, imperative that these Great Eyes are taken out once the opportunity presents itself. Great Eyes are initially supported by several Striders, which continually spawn for the majority of the mission. As the Great Eyes health is depleted, some Striders are replaced by Apprentices, then Outcasts, and finally Illusionists, with the climax of the battle featuring just the later three enemy types supporting the Great Eye. 
Unlike the illusionist or council member, the Great Eye will launch multiple homing projectiles at a time. Everything else pretty much uh, is going to be affecting the same way as the illusionist or council member projectiles. The Great Eye will also launch batches of the same instantly lethal white orbs used by the council member. It can sweep its laser cannon in a wide arc, which will kill helldivers that are not near full health. The laser beam can be avoided by going prone, engaging in a, a lift jump or not being anywhere near its direction if it's being fired in. Players can target the orbs with weapons fire to get rid of them. Fire from the incendiary bombs or the grenades perk will destroy these projectiles on contact and make for an effective temporary barrier. This does not provide any protection whatsoever against the Great Eye's laser beam, however. Their projectiles tend to curve back if dodged, so using the generator pack or even the jump pack makes Helldivers immune to the control reversing effect of the council member. And there you have it guys, this is going to be the new threat mostly. Uh, it's going to be extremely, extremely interesting. It is an enemy that's going to be vastly different from the two factions that are already in the game now. And uh, this is going to be providing that refresh to the gameplay. Not that I myself still need one, I am still very much hooked on the game. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Is this going to be all the enemies? Are they gonna probably... You know what, this is a pretty safe assumption that they will add more units, new units to this sequel, and I myself cannot wait to see what they do. Guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Uh, are you enjoying Helldivers? Are you hooked on it like uh, so many people are? And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.